Hello and welcome to the video. This is the next video in my iNav for Beginners 2022 series, putting iNav 5 into a VTEL fixed wing. Just happens to be the Mars plane, but you can use iNav for lots of different things. Wings, planes, even boats and cars. Now, iNav 5.0 is a little bit different in terms of the configurator, so and that's where we're going to spend a lot of our time. Last video, we had um, the flashing of the flight controller that we did, and we also set up the radio bound it and made sure it was all working for the receiver tab. So we're in a great place. Now we can go through each of the tabs in configurator and go through the setup. I would always recommend doing it this way and setting up the flight controller on the bench, plugging in all the different things, maybe your camera, your VTX, your GPS, all that goodness. Have it all working on the bench. Make sure you're completely happy with it. Take loads of pictures and document how it's all working on the bench. And then when you start transferring it and putting it on the model, you're just worried about making sure everything is neat and tidy and everything fits and running the cables. And then when you come to plug everything in, you know it works already and you have a photograph or two that you can just look at on your phone and figure out what everything needs to plug back into. If then when you plug it all into the model, it doesn't work, you know you've probably done something with the cabling and that's the first choice. So I would do that, trying to build iNav in a plane as you go particularly for a beginner, is a pretty tall order. So this time we're going to go through again each of the tabs and we'll also set up the GPS. I'm not going to install the FPV equipment this time because we can do that next time around because at the moment I've got some bits on order because we're going to use the DJI HD system but I'm going to be using the Menace RC Aeropods rather than the regular antennas. Uh, they seem to work really nicely for the DJI HD system and they're kind of more aerodynamic as well. So once those are in, next time we can put those in the model because that's where hopefully we'll end up after we've got to the end of this piece. It's kind of ready to start putting inside the foam. So let's get to the bench and carry on. So as I mentioned in the intro, there is a lot more work to do. Last time we just put the receiver on it really, and now there is things like the GPS to be added, as well as some other stuff too. So in Configurator, we need to go through each of the tabs, and this is a good chance to actually do a quick whistle-stop tour potentially before we go through everything. So I'm gonna power up the flight controller, and here in iNav Configurator, we'll click on Connect. So here we ha have everything ready to rock and roll. At the moment, we have all green pre-arming checks, which is good. However, we haven't really finished setting everything up. As I mentioned in the last video, we have to really go down each of these tabs in turn to get everything set up. Now, when you're doing this, I'd also recommend have the wiring diagram or where things connect uh, handy. This is the wiring diagram for the one that we're using here, the F405 wing, slightly older flight controller for Matek, um, but it does cool things like showing exactly how the ports need to be configured and where everything plugs in, and this is incredibly useful. So back in INF configurator, let's carry on working our way down. So calibration we did last time, so we now have calibrated the flight controller in six axes. The mixer, we are going to have to play in here because the default mixer that has been applied, we told it wanted an airplane, has given us a conventional tail. Now the model that I'm using isn't using a conventional tail, it's a V-tail. So we need to change that with airplane V-tail. So we need to load and apply, and then it's going to save and reboot. And when it comes back, it is going to have all of the outputs configured for the VTEL that we need. Now, the cool thing is, is one of the new things in iNav 5, if I'm now moving, look, there it is, we now have a VTEL, um, is if we go back into Mixer, it now dynamically shows in the top right-hand corner where each of the servos should be plugging in. So you can see here that we have two for stabilized roll, and then we have servo output three and four are gonna be the two V-tails. And this is where later on, we can change the weight if we need to change things, and also uh, how everything's going to work. But that is the model type, so we're in better place. Outputs, although it's up here, is probably one of the last things that we need to do. Uh, the only things that you can change here are things like your ESC protocol, I would keep it on standard unless you know you have something that's going to run digital. 
uh, things like planes tend to be happy with standard. Servo refresh rate, you have all these different speeds. 50 is fine for analog. If it's digital, I'll normally increase it to 100 hertz or maybe even a bit more. We want it to stop the motor on low throttle. We want to be able to glide about as well. Uh, that might not be something that you need to want to do. And then that's about it, really. Uh, we can come in here and use this to calibrate the ESC when we get to that point, but we will do that later. The nice thing is, is that the little image here of the plane is now consistent across the configurator, whereas it didn't used to be. Ports. Now, we need to set these up. Here are all the UARTs. I've got a video that explains what UARTs are. They're universal um, connection points. They're kind of like, think of them like a USB port that you can plug something into. UARTs can be set up to do anything on the flight controller. And the key is we need to figure out where we're gonna plug our GPS in. Because the GPS itself could plug in pretty much anywhere on the flight controller, any of these UARTs but Maytech have told us which ones are the best one. Now, looking at this, it's telling me that the GPS is best on something like UART4. And if we look at the little diagram, here's the compass showing it connected to UART4. Now, in this diagram, it's connected the standard four pins to the UART, which is ground, five volts, receive and transmit. Those are for the compass, those are for the GPS actually. And then SDL and SDA are going to two of the pins. Those are the serial clock and the serial data. Those are for the compass. Now, I would recommend for your first build, unless you are flying in incredibly high winds, don't bother with the compass. Just bin that thing, just set up the GPS piece. Uh, iNav is really clever with fixed wings. It doesn't need the compass in order to do the autonomous flying. So that means that you are for is the one that we need to set up for the GPS. So let's set that up now. So sensors, go for GPS. We'll start off with um, the default speed. Might be better to drop that down to 57,600. We'll see how we get on. So we'll save and reboot. Now that isn't gonna change anything inside configurator. All that's done is it's just told the iNav on the flight controller that there's gonna be a GPS plugged in. So in here as well is also where you can set things for things like the DJI HD system that I will eventually connect to this flight controller. It's all in here. But the great thing is, is that the guys at Maytech have kind of show you how to connect everything and also how to configure it as well. Next one, this used to be one of the main screens, but lots of things have moved off here now, is this um, configuration tab. Now this is where we set up the accelerometer and barometer and things. They are set automatically by the kind of board because iNav knows what sensors should be on the board. And apart from that, everything looks really good. There's only a couple of things that I would change on here. First of all, is the battery settings. We will come back to them later on. It can be handy to set the battery settings here so that when you're flying, uh, iNav knows when the battery is getting low. Again, we've got stop motors on throttle. The other features is where we're gonna play a little bit in here. Have the OSD turned on, permanently enable launch mode. I would permanently enable launch mode uh, for fixed wing, that's one I really love. And I also like continuously trim servos on fixed wing as well. The only other thing that I would do here is we have this thing called FW level pitch trim. This um, will give the board a slight nose up attitude. Now, the reason that we do this is because most planes don't fly straight and level. They actually fly very slightly nose up and it's better um, us giving us a little bit more for the maiden flight. So I'll do that while I remember in here. So let's copy that text, save and reboot the stuff that we've just changed so that we don't lose those settings. Do remember whenever you're doing this, in, as you go from tab to tab, if you've changed something, hit save. Until you've hit save, all you're doing is changing it here in the interface. So if we go down to CLI and type get, and then the thing we're after. At the moment, it's saying that the fitch, 
a fixed wing level pitch trim is set to zero. So we'll change that to be, I would, I'm not sure about this particular model, we'll guess at 6.0. That could be huge, but we'll give it a try. We'll say, do save and hit enter and it'll reboot again. So that means now the, the board will try, will consider six degrees up as level when it is flying. Okay, so next job then after configuration is fail safe. I would recommend setting it return to home because that's kind of the whole point rather than land. We want the model to come back to us. Obviously until we've connected the GPS, that isn't going to happen. Then we can go into PID tuning. We're not gonna change anything in here at the moment for PID tuning. To be honest, this is something that we'll do with auto tune and auto tune will also set the rates, but it's interesting just to take a note of what it looks like and the fact that now we've got these pretty sliders in here which is a little bit more graphical than just the numbers that we have before so i wouldn't do anything in here yet advanced tuning there's a lot more in this tab than there used to be so i would spend a little bit of time in here so we have things like the fixed wing launch settings uh, we have the battery estimation settings. We have the return to home settings. We have all this wonderful stuff in here. Uh, so potentially this is somewhere that was worthwhile once we've got the initial setup and we're getting ready to fly to come in and tweak some of this. But just be aware that this is where you set up things like auto launch, the automatic flight and navigation stuff, um, and the return to home settings. There's quite a lot of stuff in here now. We're not going to bother with programming. Receiver we've already done. Let's have a quick look at modes. Now, if you remember modes, I set channel five to be arming. So that's how I do channel five with low position. It isn't armed. I then set horizon for channel six. If you remember, that was my mode channel. So this is how I fly it. I don't tend to uh, maiden it like this. I had an extra couple of modes and we'll do that when we come to made in the plane so horizon manual tends to be the middle position i fly a lot in manual and then uh, now we've um, started to add things in we're starting to get some extra modes but at the moment all of the other ones that i want aren't in here with the exception of beeper so things like the gps modes that i want the return to home and the loiter we we haven't got them now, the reason we haven't got them is because we haven't got our GPS set up. So let me set the beeper on channel eight, which is the one that we're gonna need. So all we're doing is saying which values are going to activate that mode. The existing little blue thing here shows the, the, the value of that channel at the moment. So we'll click save. So to be able to finish setting up modes, we actually have to add the GPS. Now the GPS, we've told it in the ports that we've got a GPS connected, there it is on UART4, but in the GPS tab, we also need to tell it that we want to use the G GPS for navigation and telemetry, and we will set it to be something like that. And now when we save and reboot, it's going to come back up. Now, obviously we're gonna to have to install the GPS into the right UART, that's UART4. Now UART4, if we remember, is down here on the flight controller and that's where we need to plug it in. We need to plug in those ground, five volts, receive and transmit. Be aware though that the transmit line on the GPS goes to the receive line on the flight controller. That's the big trick. So what we'll do is we will disconnect from configurator, we'll power the flight controller off, and then what we'll do is we will plug in the GPS into the place on the flight controller as per the diagram. Make sure we get it the right way round. That's really important. Triple check that we haven't got that the wrong way round. Okay, there we go. We now have a GPS. Let's plug it back in. We'll click on connect. And after a moment, the GPS is probably going to go red because right now the GPS, as you can hopefully see, 
isn't powered at all. And some of the peripherals on some flight controllers, this will happen. You have to actually power it from a battery in order for everything to work. So what I'm going to do is briefly pause the video. Let me solder on a battery connector, then we can power it and then we can check that the GPS is all working. So here we are back on the bench and I've quickly connected a power cable. This is the one that goes and powers the flight controller. This will run on three to six S. I've got it connected to a 4S battery via the Firefly smoke stopper. Uh, these are really handy. Uh, whenever you're soldering anything or connecting anything to a flight controller like this, it's always worthwhile just taking a moment just to triple check your polarities are okay, i.e. the black wires are going to ground, the power wires are going to power. And also having something like this means that if in accidentally you've made a mistake, it can happen to the best of us, it isn't going to give up the ghost. So now if I turn on the power, uh, this will limit it in something bad happens. Now you can see, hopefully, if I just move it so you can see the camera, there we go. The GPS is now lit. Now it'll take a while for it to get a signal. However, it means we can plug it back into the computer and we can check that that is all working. So back on the computer, let's click on connect. And now we can see the GPS is blue. That means the GPS is configured. I now knows about it. And importantly, it's also working, which means if we go in GPS, and we look here, we should be able to see, there we go, total messages. The number of messages that's coming in is going up all the time. So the GPS is now sending information into the flight controller. And we have no errors or anything. So that looks like the speed that we set in the ports tab, which was 115200, is probably going to be okay. If we were getting lots of errors, I'd drop that down to 57600, but that should be fine. So we're down to GPS. Now, magnetometer is something that we're not going to set up. As I mentioned, you don't need a magnetometer on a flight controller like this when it's inside a fixed wing, unless you're going to be flying at very, very high speeds. So I'm not enabling the magnetometer. It's not appearing here at the top. If I wanted to, I could connect it via those I squared C pins. Again, we talked about those two here, the SCL and SDA go to these two pins on the flight controller. And then what we do is in the, uh, probably the configuration tab is there we go. We would select the magnetometer that we wanted, set it to auto, it'll usually figure it out. So we're getting towards the end. We have a tab for mission control. This allows you to uh, create missions and fly them autonomously. Um, see my video on that. And then we have the on-screen display setup. Now, this allows you to plug in pretty much any kind of FPV equipment and get critical flight information overlaid over the top. It's incredibly useful and I use it a lot. Now I am actually going to be using this system here with HD. So if I tip on HD, it'll give me uh, a view of how everything is laid out. Now this is much better than it used to be. We can see, for example, the things that we can set. So um, I'm not bothered about signal strength. I do like battery voltage, altitude, uh, I like that is the, the amount of battery that's been used. So I usually have that down the bottom number of satellites. I like at the top. Uh, so you just drag everything around, um, and just put them where you want them to be. Um, fly mode can be handy. Um, just spend a bit of time in here, move it all around when you're happy, click save. Other big tip is if you're using analog FPV, make sure that you go into the font manager, pick the font of the kind that you like. There's loads of different options up here for different ones and then click upload font because one of the big reasons that I now have jumped from four to five is because that font has now changed. And then that is pretty much it. We're kind of set. Now, next time when we come back, we can finish uh, installing this into the model. We now haven't got the outputs enabled, 
That's one of the last things we're going to do when it's in the model and we're happy. But we do know, thanks to the mixer, where the servos are going to plug in because it kind of tells us in here. So we need to take a note of where this is because we have uh, servos one and two, which are going to be our ailerons. Servos three and four are going to be the uh, connections to the bits at the back for the V-tail. But we have most of it set up so we're in a really good place so with all of that stuff set up we are ready to start putting it inside the foam wing as i mentioned in the introduction i'm waiting for a couple of parts at the moment so i'm just going to have to hang on to put the dji hd system in it but again the setup of that isn't particularly tricky i've got loads of videos on how to add traditional and dji hd fpv systems onto lots of different flight controllers uh, in the if you're interested, I'll put a link down below so you can go and check some of those out. But again, join me next time where we'll get into this in a little bit more detail and put it into the model. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.